Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bits of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about semiconductor manufacturing. Now, up until this point, we've been primarily concerned with the higher levels of abstraction. So things like software, system software, and even architecture. But as good computer architects, um, we want to have some context about the lower levels of abstraction as well. So things like semiconductor manufacturing. And at the end of the day, we want to be able to answer the question, if only at a high level, of how do we actually make a chip? So how do we go from you know a raw piece of silicon all the way to a microchip? Now at a high level, we can lay out this process of IC design and fabrication into nine steps. So starting out, we can lay out our chip development plans. We can lay out our constraints in terms of area, power, cost, and even time, right? So what is our time to market? Now from there, we can lay out other constraints like what do we want our chip to do and what performance uh, do we want out of our chip. And with all this information, we can begin designing our chip, right? So our function design and our logic design. Now, as we design right, our chip, we go through quite extensive simulation and testing. So we wanna make sure that whatever we're designing is correct, and it's gonna do what we expect on the other side, right? Once we actually have our chips fabricated. So this is really a critical step due to a lot of the costs that we have um, in, in semiconductor manufacturing. Now, once we're fairly confident in our, in our design, we can go through the physical design steps. So we're basically going to translate our you know, high level, you know, function and logic design into the physical geometries that are going to go onto our wafer. And with this, we can end up building our photo mask, right? So uh, our photo mask is, this, uh, is part of this process of fabrication called photolithography. And it's basically our stencil for our integrated circuit that's going to be used during this front end fabrication. So with our photo mask, we do our front end fabrication which is basically all the steps to go from, you know, a blank wafer, you know, piece of silicon, all the way through until we have, you know, still our wafer, but now covered with our circuits, right? That's what's going to be our front end fabrication, typically made up our, of our FEOL, our front end of line processes, and our back end of line processes. Now, after our front end fabrication, and we have our wafer covered in our circuits, um, we send this to our back end fabrication step. Right, so during our back-end fabrication, we're going to do our testing of our circuits on our wafer. We're gonna dice things up. We're going to add wires to them. We're gonna package them. And eventually, after our back-end fabrication, we wind up with our microchip, right? Our end result that it, we're going to try to sell to customers. So those are the high-level steps, right, of this IC design and fabrication process. But what exactly does some of this look like under the hood, right? Specifically, these fabrication steps and manufacturing steps. So it's actually quite complex, and even this is quite a high-level uh, diagram of what we're going to be doing during manufacturing. And we're going to be talking about this in terms of three major areas, and that's going to be our wafer manufacturing. So how do we actually get these silicon wafers that we're going to use for these manufacturing steps or these fabrication steps? We have our front-end fabrication steps. So this is everything um, to turn you know, a blank piece of silicon into a piece of silicon that's covered in our circuits. And then we're going to talk about our back end fabrication steps. So this is going to be how do we take that piece of silicon covered in our circuits and turn it into the individual chips that we're going to sell to customers. So let's start out with wafer manufacturing. So it all starts with a silicon ingot. So we basically take the silicon ingot and we lower it into this crucible filled with, you know, 100, you know, roughly 100% pure molten silicon. And we gradually withdraw it. And as we're doing this, and as both of, both of these things are rotating, the silicon atoms um, attach to the seed, right, the silicon ingot, and we create this large rod of silicon on the other side. So what, what exactly do we do with this large rod of silicon? So we go through a number of wafer preparation steps. So we'll do cropping, grinding, and slicing to chop up this rod of silicon. And then things like lapping, etching, polishing, and cleaning to basically remove any damaged areas to make sure they're completely flat um, and to also clean them to make sure that they don't have any you know, impurities on their surface. So we're basically just making the foundation for our future um, integrated circuits. Now with this, you know, we pass the silicon wafers to our front end fabrication steps. And that generally starts out with things like epitaxy and oxidation, right? These are two of the very early steps in fabrication. So, you know, these, 
epitaxy. We're talking about depositing this overlayer of crystal, uh, often referred to as an epitaxial film, um, on our substrate in a defined orientation. And with oxidation, you know, we're growing silicon dioxide um, on our wafer, so SiO2. And that's because it's going to act as this electrical insulator that we want. Now from there, we have things like photolithography, um, etching, and doping. Now our photolithography uh, is going to be our photoresist and microlithography uh, stages from that flowchart that we had. And it's going to be using our photo mask that we talked about which is this copy of our circuit pattern, um, you know, created uh, or rather drawn onto a quartz plate. And it's really the stencil for making our integrated circuits. So the basic, you know, thing that we do during photolithography is we apply this thing called a photoresist. So something that's going to react to light um, to our wafer. And then we expose uh, our wafer covered in this film of photoresist uh, to light through our photo mask, right? Which is our stencil. And the main idea behind this is that we're protecting parts of our wafer um, for the later, later processes that we have. So after photolithography, we have things like etching and doping. So from etching, we're removing things from our wafer. So things like silicon, silicon oxide, polysilicon, or metals. And then with doping, we're increasing the conductivity um, of the actual silicon uh, through things like ion implantation or diffusion. And these are things that we often refer to as our FUL, our front end of line processes. And we may repeat these processes multiple times. Um, the same is true for our back end of line processes. So in, in terms of our back end of line processes, right, where we're actually going from you know, a wafer covered in transistors to um, our transistors being connected into our circuits, we have things like deposition, right, where we're depositing things onto the onto our wafer, so things like silicon nitride, silicon dioxide, silicon, or metal, right, on, onto our wafers. And then we have our chemical mechanical planarization, right, CMP. And this is just a really fun way of saying that we're going to put a chemical slurry on our wafer, and then we're going to polish it, right? And we're going to do this to uh, both make sure our wafer is flat, so that's a planarization part, and we also want to make sure that we're removing any excess material from the previous process steps, right? And that's going to be basically our front-end fabrication steps. So, you know, all of these, you know, steps and processes may be repeated, you know, many, many times, right, on the order of 300 plus times, right? And at the end of this, right, we have our piece of silicon covered in our circuits, which leads us to our next part, right, which is our back-end manufacturing. So how do we go from this piece of, round piece of silicon that's covered in our circuits to the actual chips that's, you know, going to be put on a motherboard or something? So the first thing we do is typically testing, right? So we can electrically test our chips on our wafer, and we can see which ones have, you know, you know, problems, right? Which ones we want to just filter out early, right? So we can mark them for rejection. Now, after our testing, we go into the grinding and dicing phase. So we can thin the back of the wafer so that our final results are more uh, amenable to packaging. And then we actually cut the wafer into our individual dies, right? The individual chips that we want to package. From there, we go into wire bonding, where we're connecting the IC to the substrate using, you know, these fine gold or copper wires. So we're basically making our connections to our silicon via these, you know, fine gold and copper wires. And then from there, we have our encapsulation, which is basically going to be our packaging and our assembly. Uh, assembly. So we're putting our semiconductor, right, into uniform packages, right? You know, the eventual things that we're going to sell, right? And then the final thing, of course, is the final testing that we do. So we want to verify that after all of these other manufacturing steps of, you know, dicing, you know, the wafers up, putting them into packages, uh, we want to make sure that everything still works. So we want to test things like functionality, performance, and power, right? And a lot of times there'll be a decent amount of overlap of this testing with the initial testing we did while everything was still on the wafer. And then at the very end of all this, we have our chips, right? So that's a high level overview of the steps of manufacturing. So how do we go from a silicon ingot all the way to a microchip? And I'd encourage you to you know, search around online and uh, learn more about this if you're interested. Right? A lot of this information came from the uh, Semiconductor Manufacturing Handbook, um, not the Computer organiza Organization and Design textbook that we're largely going through for these videos. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.